More than 20 years ago, it was pretty much unimaginable as a PC user to properly live without it, the sound card, that is if you wanted clean and realistic audio on the PC platform. But time has passed and we've gotten better and more and more powerful solutions directly on our motherboards. We are of course talking of the so-called onboard audio solution. And while it was a super convenient and very welcome addition, it still had the reputation of not exactly offering the best quality sound there is. Such statements by now mostly date back years. And as we all know and expect, technology keeps improving as time goes on, meaning these days we do in fact get pretty respectable onboard sound. As you may have guessed, we need to differentiate between all those audio codecs and all the bells and whistles those usually come with. So needless to say, those among us that are somewhat audiophile will at some point ask ourselves, do we actually still need a sound card or DAC these days in order to achieve clean usable audio? Today I'm taking a look at the reasonably priced Creative Sound Blaster Z SE PCIe sound card, which you can pick up for about 110 US dollars right now. You can even get a 10% discount by entering the discount code I've put in the video description for you. In fact, I'll put this specific card up against not only one, two other sound cards, but also up against a couple onboard audio solutions. Especially long-time PC users will recognize and cherish the Sound Blaster brand. It simply is legendary and always stood for quality. Now whether or not they in 2021 still can keep up with their reputation of the past, I'll try to find out today. As for what comes included, it's a fairly minimalistic package. Besides the card itself in a gorgeous red metallic look, we are getting a bit of paper documentation and that's pretty much it. As with most things nowadays, therefore also with tech, we tend to pay a lot of attention to looks. And for aesthetics, I can give Creative a solid 10 out of 10. A glaring red color tone might be quite daring in a world dominated mainly by black gray themed hardware out there, but I personally certainly like the design a lot. But well, at the end of the day, it's not really what matters. Needless to say, this of course is a metal shroud, so it also somewhat acts as a shield against interference that is part of our PC's interior. When it comes to audio, EMI, electromagnetic interference is very welcome. In the center, through that acrylic window, we get to see the heart of the sound card, the actual audio processor, which Creative named Soundcore 3D. And just to avoid any kind of confusion or any misunderstandings right away, let me clarify, this is an internal audio solution for the PC. We are talking of the PCI Express X1 interface. As was to be expected, a max of 5.1 channels can be outputted, 7.1 virtually. In terms of outputs, we get a 3.5mm front out, rear out, center subwoofer, headphone out, as well as a single toss link, therefore optical. Inputs, 3.5mm line in slash mic in, as well as toss link, optical here too. The Sound Blaster Z SE can play back up to 24-bit, 192kHz and record at 24-bit and 96kHz at max. The SNR, the signal to noise ratio, according to Creative, is at a respectable 116 decibels. Unlike with most other sound cards out there, with this particular model, there's no additional power connector required. It draws all the needed power from the PCIe slot. On the rear end of this beauty of a card, we only get to see that one front panel HD audio header for cases for instance. Creative, as many do, promises to drive headphones even with up to 600 ohms of impedance with this card. After all, a pretty powerful headphone amplifier is on board. Very well, but let's now get to the hard facts. Finally, I am now able to offer you something measurable, actual numbers when it comes to audio. However, I would like to very clearly point out that these don't paint the whole picture, there is more to look out for. Nonetheless, it's at least a very simple reference point to start with and we do in fact get to see first weaknesses of the onboard solutions. Now these are the test results I managed to achieve.
As said, there is not a whole lot of significance to these achieved values, but what it clearly shows is that dedicated audio solutions such as sound cards or DACs overall definitely deliver better results. Let's start with dynamic range for instance. At 116 to all the way up to 135 decibels, a sound card for sure is noticeably louder, more powerful than onboard sound at only 96 to 99 decibels. There however also are older Realtek onboard solutions that drop below the 90 decibel mark, most of the time with fairly cheap motherboards. Another great advantage of dedicated solutions is the significantly lower stereo crosstalk. This basically means there is much smaller leakage of sound noticeable from one channel to another, if you will. So audio from the right channel for instance doesn't interfere as much with the left channel in simple words. Ideally we want our left and right channels to work completely independently without interfering with each other. But it needs to be said, values of negative 90 decibels on the Realtek ALC1220 onboard codec should not be considered bad or unusable by any means. In simple words, let me tell you, a good dedicated solution, be it an external DAC or internal sound card, will get you noticeably cleaner, louder, more powerful and punch your audio. Audio that at the end of the day is a lot more fun than any onboard solution. This not only affects one's music listening experience, but also when gaming or watching movies, you will notice or rather hear a difference. But there's one thing you need to keep in mind. In the end, it always depends on what kind of speaker setup and headphones you use. Especially gaming headsets are known to cost a fair bit of money without actually delivering on actual audio quality. I'm sorry, that's the harsh reality. Of course, there are exceptions, as with everything in life. If you go for some proper, decent pair of headphones, even such Bayer Dynamic DT770 Pro for about $160, even those will make you hear a difference between the onboard codec and sound card. Needless to say, not all of us actually put a lot of focus on our audio, and some might not even notice, and that is perfectly okay. Such users should then simply stick with the onboard solutions that nowadays can be found on the good motherboards out there, it will most likely suit you just fine. The Creative Sound Blaster Z SE for sure does remarkably well given its price tag, and not only delivers purely on a hardware level, but also manages to offer a whole lot of impressive software features. The majority of it probably to be labeled under the category gimmick, but here and there, there's a feature among those that can actually come in quite useful in real situations. Within the Sound Blaster command software, we for instance can switch between preset profiles, modify, customize these to our liking and save those changes made. Then there also happens to be a precise equalizer around. A nice touch is that there are a whole bunch of EQ presets for quite a few different headphones, albeit the list is not as long as I had hoped for. In the speaker settings, we can do some precise channel configuring, even adjust the crossover frequency, as well as fine tune or rather calibrate each individual speaker within this software. Needless to say, we can choose and switch between the audio quality on the fly. Furthermore, there is also direct mode, which gives us audio in its purest form directly from the source. Even footsteps in-game can be amplified with the scout mode, also toggling on and off via hotkey. If you are someone that likes watching many movies, you will be happy to hear Dolby Digital Live Surround as well as DTS Connect are supported. We can do a little bit of adjusting even here. So the Creative Sound Blaster Z SE definitely impressed me. Me being a great music listener, enthusiast one could say, could not miss out on a good pair of headphones and a powerful sound card or DAC anymore. Those are a must for me. Even microphones benefit a lot from those more powerful low noise inputs. However, by now there are many good onboard solutions out there on loads of motherboards. Especially in the last few years, there have been some improvements made on motherboards to deliver better audio. As so often, at the end of the day, it's you that needs to make a choice and that depends on whether or not you actually listen as closely or even want to do that. Today's Sound Blaster ZSE for sure is a very good product, well worth recommending. With that being said, thanks for watching, I hope I could help you make appreciate audio a little more. 
Take care.